we have been studying one verse for the longest time, two verses. But preparing, or I should say Peter has been uh, preparing us for what we're going to start now in the next for the next few weeks. And we we were studying how to prepare the mind for action. And we saw how preparing the mind means different things of how we prepare the, the mind in prayer and the word and, um, and we put on the full armor of God and we looked at we looked at all the graces that God has given us um, from the beginning of of uh, first Peter where uh, verse 3 where we where we learned of uh, how in his great love he has given us uh, the new birth and we have we have now a, a living a living hope we have we have an inheritance uh, and then we saw a whole list of the graces that God has has given us all these graces that God has has given us is to be able to do what he has called us to do and till the as as we heard till uh, the work is done and the work is not done yet we have a lot um, to go and the one verse that, that we have uh, to, to work on today um, is is 115 first uh, Peter 115 and 16 uh, where it says but just as he who called you is holy so be holy in all that you do for it is written be holy because I am holy we have been preparing all this time or Peter has been sharing with us all this time in the previous verses and together with Paul, what Paul says um, just to start with this be holy as I am holy so the question is what does it mean to be holy and we need to break it down to understand it um, to be holy and it, it's, it's one of those verses where it kind of um, makes us uneasy because we know that that uh, in our nature in our personality in our regular life we might not see ourselves as holy um, and this is one of those verses that has a um, deeper meaning, meaning than that, uh, to, be, to be holy. Um, and two words have been used in the Old Testament and New Testament throughout the whole Bible. Is, one is faith. Faith. And uh, we see that in... Genesis 17 1 where I see it for the first time and God is talking to Abraham remember Abraham has been told go go to this place you don't know where but I want you to go over there now the two things come into play here Abraham had to have a strong faith and obedience look at what it says there in uh, Genesis 17 1 when Abraham was 99 years old the Lord appeared to him and said I am God Almighty walk before me faithfully and be blameless walk before me in another version it says walk before me and be perfect again come on who can say, I'm perfect, okay? No. But we need to see what he's meaning behind that. Abraham, none of the Old Testament, New Testament, nor us can say that we are perfect in how we understand perfection. Or we, we don't uh, say we're holy as how we understand what uh, holiness means sometimes, how people give it that, that meaning. But... Abraham and us still have the same two. We have to have the same faith 
and the obedience. When God told him, go over there, um, he knew who he was dealing with. He knew that he had to obey. Do you remember um, when somebody did not obey and went the other direction? Remember that guy named Jonah? And God told him, I want you to go over there to that city, that great city. They need to hear the word. They're lost. And preach the, preach the word. And Jonah said, uh -uh. I'm going that way. He got a Napoleon. But the Lord <laughs> works with him and gets him on track to do. We see that his, his problem was obedience. He had a faith in God, but he needed to obey God. And that's what we're seeing throughout this whole uh, study is that we have a faith in God fully placed on him, but now we need to obey. And how we uh, know what we need to obey is is different with each of us. He speaks to us in a different way, in a very unique way. You all remember the, the Great Commission? The Great Commission says to go make disciples, baptize them. And then it says, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Um, so again, there's the two, the two main thoughts there. Bring these people into a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and then teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. At one point or another, we'll need to go through that. That uh, What are all these things that I have commanded you that we need to obey? Um, and um, we see that those two are going to um, be showing up all the time. Why is it so important to be holy? What does it mean to be holy? We're going to look at that. Um, why is it so important to obey? Um, and we need to stop and think. It, it's more of who you are. When, when it talks about being holy, it, did, it didn't know who you are in Christ. Um, not necessarily just as an individual or personality, but your position, and we looked at this, your relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ decides who you are. Remember what John uh, said in 114, for as many as received him, to those that believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So that relationship as a child of God is who we are. And then again, Paul says, in, this, says there in, to, to the Corinthians uh, 517, if anyone is in Christ, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has, has, has come. So we need to remember that the relationship that we have with God is what we're dealing with um, here. And um, let's look at, we know what in the Old Testament, um, the temple was. Everything in the temple, and we're not going to go through all the, the verses, but everything in the temple was, was dedicated 100% for the Lord's use and to his honor and glory no other use had one purpose serve God this microphone here has one purpose in the temple every lamp every chair every every table every item in the temple had a specific purpose totally dedicated to God nothing else and we need to see ourselves as individuals that our priority, our calling has been to worship God, to serve Him. Remember what we said last week in Jesus' temptation? 
um, where it got to the point where Satan said, uh, if you fall down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus had to respond and, and says, and says that the scripture said you shall worship God only and serve him only. So Jesus is our example that whatever comes around in our life, we need to always keep in check and focus and refocus what is priority in, in our life. Uh, when it comes to worship, when it comes to uh, reverence, when it comes to service, uh, we do it all for the honor and glory of God. So right there, it says that, that we read, um, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. Be separate in all that you do. Be focused in all that you do. Who you're doing it for. Why are you doing why are you doing this? Um, I've learned that if um, the right reason is not there, um, it doesn't go right. It doesn't go well. I've had uh, people want to be in ministry, but that is because they thought that being in ministry was some, some kind of position of, you know, of grandeur. Uh, and uh, they learned very quickly that ministry is service to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no glory there. There is no prestige there. It has to be, you do it only because you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Dedicate yourself to that. Um, and separate yourself for that specific, specific purpose. Now, we're going to be looking at another, another who are you? Who are you? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 and 17. Look at what it says. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple? And that God's Spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred. And you, together, are God's temple. Wow. Now you're a temple. Now, as an individual, uh, we might not feel... Uh, that we're part of a temple of God where God dwells. But we're talking worldwide. Every person that has come to receive the Lord Jesus Christ becomes part of that temple that you are a part of, an individual. And But look at how important you are as an individual. Because it is God who has called you, the Holy Spirit, by one Spirit we have all been baptized into one body. Um, one temple. Now, um, these words are very strong and it doesn't refer to anybody here, but if there was a person that uh, messed around with the temple of God, messed around with the church of God, trying to hurt the church, God's going to hurt that person. Destroy the church. God's going to destroy that person. Um, so that's how important you are as an individual. Uh, don't touch the church. Don't touch the church. Um, so we, we see that you are part of the temple, the body. Um, you're part of the body of Christ. I'm not going to go into it, but I I printed this this uh, body, the body of Christ, 100 verses where it talked about you are the body of Christ. 100 verses. That tells me that that is very important, and it will take a long time for us to go through 100 verses talking about that we 
are part of the body uh, of, of Christ. And um, now, let's look at let's look at um, another another verse that uh, is explain who we are. Okay. This time we're going to be looking at First Peter chapter two, verse four and five. You'll, you'll see it up there. Uh, as you come to him, look, did you notice that? You come to him. When do you come to him? You need to stop and remember that. You came to Jesus Christ when he called you. You came to Jesus Christ when he found you. You came to Jesus Christ when he when he uh, gave you new life, new birth. As, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God, and precious to him, listen, you also, like living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house. Now, we are looking at the temple, you're the temple, you're part of the body of Christ. Now you're being described as your a, a spiritual house. But here's the, the most important thing. To be a holy priesthood. Do, do you see yourself as a priesthood? As a priest? I say, no, I'm not wearing black and I'm not wearing a little white color. You know? Um, but you are a priest. In the Old Testament, they had the priests that would do the service in, in the temple. That's the Old Testament covenant. That's the Old Testament method. But in the New Testament, it came to where we, as individuals, are now the priests. And what did the priests do? Now look at what it says here spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Offering spiritual sacrifices. When you're told to pray, when you're asked to pray, you're offering spiritual sacrifices. Um, whatever you do in ministry, that is a spiritual sacrifice. Um, it's part of your service. Your service. Now, if you remember in Romans 12, it says, uh, be, don't be conformed to uh, the world, but be transformed. And we touched on this in previous messages. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know what God's perfect will is. Good and perfect will. That's why we're always asked to be uh, daily, as you said, daily, be realigning, realigning, being cleansed, and uh, <clears throat> serving in serving God. So you are a holy priesthood. Again, holy because the priests were separate, called, and separated, and anointed to do the work that they did. A person just would not would not just say, okay, I'm going to be a priest. No. They had to be chosen. Just as like the, like the high priest had to be chosen to do what he did. Um, and we are called. We are called um, to do his work through the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices. You intercede for people. You intercede for those that are that are sick. You intercede for those that are that are hurting. Um, that is part of your spiritual um, work as a as a priest. And um, then we have then we have uh, what 
Again, Peter tells us in 2 9, he reminds us, but you are a chosen people. God chose you. You wouldn't be here if he hadn't chosen me and called you. I wouldn't be here if he hadn't chosen me and called me specifically. Um, a royal priesthood, again, royal. Who do we serve? The king. That's why we're used, using the word royal priesthood. Um, holy nation. Now we're, now we're dealing with more words than one here. You are, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. And then it says God's special possession. That's what you are. You are God's special possession. You belong to Him. And no better, nobody better touch you. You're the apple of His eye. I painted a, an apple. Um, that my hobby that I do is painted. I painted a, a, an apple and put a verse on it. And I said, this apple represents Sophia, my granddaughter. And I told my son, because she is the apple of your eye. And we as Christians are the apple of God's eyes. And don't mess with the church. Don't hurt the church. As we saw here, if anybody destroys the church, God will destroy him. Um, I was always protective of my children, and you too. Uh, nobody messes with your children and, and grandchildren now. Huh? Um, so we're special possession. We're precious to him. And another thing, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We declare his praises. So we are we are a, a chosen people, a chosen nation, a special precious possession. We are a royal priesthood and we intercede for those that we minister to uh, we offer spiritual sacrifices in prayers and petitions and uh, and then we declare his praises as it says here that this holy nation that has been called out what is the word, what is the word ecclesia mean ecclesia church Ecclesia, Ecclesia or Ecclesia in Spanish called out so you are a called out and you gather as a church as those that have been called out out of uh, darkness into his wonderful light so we declare his praises and we offer spiritual sacrifices as you minister to the littlest ones to what whoever is in need of ministry. And that's what you're doing. Sometimes you might not be aware of it, but you're ministering. And, and during the day, you're ministering. As you see somebody and you give a word of encouragement to somebody, the Lord is giving a word of encouragement to that, to that person. Because who you are, and you have dedicated yourself, separated yourself, sanctified, been sanctified, and you're in the process of being sanctified every day as, as we saw to be able to do your work. So be holy as the one who called you is holy. Let's pray. Father, you have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. And you have given us grace upon grace. You've called us to be not only a holy nation, but a holy priesthood. Help us, Father, daily as we intercede in prayer, as we whisper or sigh a prayer on behalf of someone that is in need. And Father, thank you that we can uh, declare your praises that others may hear and know how wonderful how loving, 
how caring you are. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to reach out to everybody out there who made a decision for the first time to give their lives to Christ. And if you did that today, we want you to reach out to us. You can leave a message in the YouTube video here um, and or go to our website, uh, thehealsporterville.com, and uh, click on the uh, prayer button and leave us a message. Um, we want to follow up with you, and we want to celebrate with you in that decision, okay? On that same note, um, with uh, anybody who needs a prayer, uh, we're continuously um, taking prayer requests. So uh, you have something that comes up or um, you got a hurt or you need a prayer, um, please um, share with us. Uh, we want to pray over you. We have a team that uh, goes over those prayer requests and prays over, the, over those prayer requests uh, every day. And so um, continue to bring those in. We see them coming in. We see them coming in throughout the week. And so continue to do that. Um, it just keeps us together as we are spread apart um, in this church, um, at home, out in the community, and not being able to be meet together on Sundays. Uh, so continue those prayer requests. I just want to say thank you to everybody out there that's been tithing. Um, we're so excited that you're so generous and you continue to tithe. We know times are hard, and um, uh, we appreciate everything everybody's doing. We are continuing to cherish that um, tithe that you have provided us. We continue to share those, those tithes uh, with our community, uh, for our church, um, and um, I just want to say thank you. Um, and if you want to continue to tithe, um, you have opportunity to tithe also. You can go to our, heel, to our website, thehealsporterville.com, um, and you can uh, click on Give. And um, you can set up uh, a one-time or a recurring uh, tithing. You can also do that online, or I'm sorry, on your phone um, by texting. Uh, you just text 84321 and um, you can set up uh, a one-time or reoccurring uh, tithe to the church. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for being so generous um, with your money. Um, it is continuously being the church when you do that, um, sharing your money and sharing um, your wealth with the world. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Have a good day and go be the church.